Brian is making some adjustments to Autumn's wheelchair. We have resized it to fit her better. And we are adding in some extra side supports, or I guess front and back supports, but so that it stabilizes it better because she gets pretty excited when she gets in her chair and starts to rocking. Are you excited, Ryan? I think so. <laughs> Getting there. Hopefully if it works. <laughs> A lot of a lot of trial and error. I've never made a wheelchair for a goat or wheelchair for anything. Right. So, good thing we have lots of extra material. <laughs> As you can see, Autumn is doing well. She uh, keeps jumping out her hay into her bedding and then eating it, which is silly because we don't want her eating bedding hay. But she does pretty good, and she's been going out in the sunshine and with the herd, so that's been fun. The herd kind of sniffs at her a lot and they are curious about her, but they're pretty nice. They steal her hay though, so we're getting her fed well before we bring her out. We, we found an, an egg on <gasps> the hay. What is that? It's the egg. Yeah. Where did it come from? I don't know. It's Could it be? that a leprechaun put it there? Yeah. Oh my goodness, that Trixie leprechaun. Let's take a look. Oh, yep. I think that's a leprechaun tooth print. What do you think? You see that? Yeah. Yeah. I think a leprechaun tried to eat our eggs, guys. Yeah. So, what's what day is it today? St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, can you tell everybody Happy St. Patrick's Day? Happy, Happy St. Patrick's, St. Patrick's Day. Day. <laughs> were you guys dancing earlier? What kind of dance were you doing? Um, the leprechaun dance. The leprechaun dance. Yeah. Yeah, and you want to show us a little bit of that? I didn't do it, but only Liam did, but I oh. can do whatever you did. That's a yellow one there. You see yellow in it? Yeah. Is it gold? Yeah. <sighs> oh my gosh, the first gold penny. <laughs> Inside the egg? I don't know about that. Is that the leprechaun dance? Yeah. That's amazing. Awesome. Good job, Rowan. Excuse me, bees. I need to reach in here amongst you and snap off this lovely big asparagus spear. Hey, boys, look what I got. Oh, asparagus. Guess what? What? My sexy red bearded leprechaun dad. <gasps> wow. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day is when you have all green yeah, stuff. Like it. <laughs> you steal it from me. But I like it cooked. Yeah. And crispy. Yeah, me too. Mm. That's I like it I like it right now. Yeah, sometimes I like it right now. It's the perfect fresh spring garden snack. Just like the strawberries. Let's go plant some strawberries, boys. Please excuse that mess and that mess. <laughs> All right. Let's see what kind we have. Oh, there's something weird on there. There's the seascape everbearing. And then there's this other one. Name. This is the one I'm looking for. This is a white strawberry. Yes. What? what? A white strawberry. So I it's like often called pineberry, and it's often said to taste like a cross between a pineapple and a strawberry. But the label says it is a white Carolina. So that is 
the cultivar of this pine berry. And as you can see, when they arrive, they're nothing but roots. I do have a video that tells you how to plant strawberry crowns, so you can check that video out. I'll leave a link in the description. So they're just tiny little plant growing off the top with roots, and these uh, spent stems are just, those can be trimmed off. And you don't wanna plant it deep. That is the biggest problem people make. You wanna make sure you plant them right here at the crown of the plant between where the plant grows up and the roots grow down. So we're gonna plant these in the boys teepee garden. We have two flower boxes on either side of their little entryway and we're gonna plant the strawberries in that and we're gonna also plant some peas. What do you think of that? Yeah. So the I peas like can peas. grow up. I like peas. Yes you do. Alright let's get to it. I like peas. Doing, Ryan? Doing some physical therapy and letting a goat act like a goat. Letting her do what goats do best. Clear wood lines. Good girl. You like that privet? Does that taste good? <laughs> yep, that's your strawberry, so you put it on the other side. Alright, the boys got their strawberries and peas planted and they're labeling them. What do you want to do next? I see a bee. There's lots of bees around. I gotta give the bees their sugar water now. All right, buddy. Which strawberry you wanna plant in that planter? Uh. Let's see, move the peas. We've got two bags of Seascape, and then this one's either Albion or the other one. I wanna do this. This one? Yeah, that looks pretty healthy. Let's do that one. Our strawberries came from a subscriber. They got them off of our Amazon wish list. So we will make sure that they are in our Amazon store for those of you that are interested in purchasing them. You gotta get the roots all the way in so your hole needs to be a lot deeper for those. There you go. Good, perfect. Now just tuck it in. Oh, Liam, you are the perfect strawberry planter. There you go, folks. So easy a three-year-old can do it. This boy loves the garden. He loves to help mommy and daddy. Yep, do another one. I think your hole can be bigger than just one finger. I bet you could do five fingers because the strawberries are so big in this bag. So our intention with this batch of strawberries was to plant them all the way around the teepee but because the soil has not been prepared and the strawberries are ready to be planted now, we're gonna go ahead and plant them in these window boxes and then they can be transplanted at the right time when we have everything ready for them. So, Daddy hasn't had time to prepare any of my beds and get the soil ready for planting, so we've kind of just been waiting on some of the things, but some early spring things really can't wait. So we're gonna to try to do what we can with what we have. Put this one, do this, 
then Whoops, that one's upside down. There you go. This. And, and tuck it in. Look at you go, boy. Very good work. And now I'm done! You planted them all! Oh, wait, there's one more on the ground. Oh, two more little ones by your knee. Right here. There. Little tiny ones. So you can just put them back in the in the spot that's more open. Yep. Yeah. This one go here. They might be a little bit crowded at first, but we're going to transplant them into your garden as soon as your garden is ready to plant. What's a bug? I don't know. Just a bug. But maybe it's not, maybe it bites. Nah. I don't think so. Oh, it flies too. Now Autumn's just enjoying some very lush spring growth on our grass. And we're going to water in the boys' strawberry plants and peas. Going to water everything in really good after we plant it to remove any air pockets that might have developed while we were manipulating. Autumn, you are the cutest. Yummy. But I miss all of her. All right. I think he went right in that tube, boys. Mm -hmm. If you pick up that tube, Rowan, and take it out, then we'll rescue him. Go real slow. You got it. You got him. You got him. Okay. Place it down on the ground. Put it down. You see his tail sticking out still? Yeah. yeah. I don't think he can get out the other end, so I think he's waiting till he knows he's safe. Um, you can come out. It looks like Cowardly Pearson. There we go. All right. It looks like Cowardly Pearson. Hey, little guy, you can come out now. Don't go that way, it's too narrow. You're not gonna fit that way, buddy. Come out. I know. If he thinks something's coming in that way, he's gonna run out the back. Hope he didn't poke it, your, his eye. Nah, he's pretty smart. There he is. Oh! And you don't ever pull them by their tail because their tails can break off. <gasps> there he goes! We That's saved so cool. him! Let's, Beautiful blue tailed skink. What did I hold? No, he doesn't want to be held. He's scared. He was stuck in that water trough. Mommy saw him when she was filling up her water can. And we were able to rescue him and get him out. It looks like Coyote Pearson. I don't know who that is, but okay. <laughs> You're cute, boys. Thank you for helping me. Are you happy, Autumn? You seem to be enjoying yourself quite nicely. Sweet little goat. All right, we've got, um, let's see, 25, 50, 75, 100 strawberries planted with peas, heavily seeded on top. <laughs> I'm not thinking that this batch of seeds is viable anymore because I've had them for a while and they were reduced clearance from the Dollar General. So this is just our little experiment if we end up with too many peas then we can always eat them as shoots because pea shoots are edible as well as the peas so if we have to thin them out to add to a salad that's just okay with me so it's funny how things have worked out this year for us with the ground being so saturated that it's been really hard to plant anything but we were gifted the potato grow bags so we could get our potatoes in the ground and we were gifted these window boxes so we were able to get our strawberries in the ground as well. So we are not new to container garden. We have not done container gardening in our vegetable garden in many, 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 many years. We've always planted in the ground or raised beds, but at our old job where we took care of a farm to table vegetable garden as well as five acres of ornamental um, garden beds and landscaping, we had 150 containers that we had to 
replant seasonally and keep looking lush and healthy all year long for all of the guests that visited the location that we worked at. So we definitely know a thing or two about container gardening and we're super excited to be doing a little bit of that in our vegetable garden to help supplement and get us started a little earlier than we would have been if we waited for the ground to dry up. And now I think it might be time for me to go feed my bees. So I'm going to go get Ryan and see if he's ready. He's been working on some other stuff. And we'll get our bees their sugar syrup so they don't get hungry. Alright, they look really active today. Probably should have done this in the morning, but we're doing it when we can. Oh boy. Alright. So, sure about this? For today, we are feeding our bees. So we've already fed them once, and now we have to probably refill another quart of syrup for them. Our syrup is one gallon of water to 5.75 pounds of sugar, and you just have to heat the water up enough to get the sugar to melt. Some people bring it to a full boil. I just got it pretty close to, you know, I could still put my fingers in it. It was pretty close to boiling, but not quite there. Um, got it stirred in really good, made sure it was completely dissolved, and then added five drops of wintergreen, five drops of thyme, and five drops of tea tree essential oils. I used all doTERRA products. Um, I, I really feel strongly about using high quality oils when you're using it for your precious animals like your bees or your goats or your chickens. So that is my choice is to use the doTERRA product. So our simple syrup is just a one to one ratio of sugar and water. And then we add the tea tree oil, five drops, so that it will stay fresh and won't go bad. It, it, it preserves the water and keeps it from getting any fungus growth on it or anything. Then the wintergreen and the thyme help prevent mites from coming into the hive. So this is very helpful for our bees and it's just a really cool way to incorporate essential oils into your beekeeping. Um, another essential oil that we're using in our beekeeping is in our swarm trap we have lemongrass oil. So lemongrass attracts the bee, attracts the queen bee, and um, hopefully will get us a swarm as well. Cool. All we're gonna do is remove one of these jars, which they've already begun propolizing. I didn't bring my brush with me, but I'm sure these bees will. So they've already begun propolizing them to the... Just place them there. And it looks like they are already building comb on the, high, on the frames that I placed in there just to hold space. So that's really cool. All right, guys. Let me get this open. Don't want to smush anybody or make anybody upset. So next time I know to grab my brush so that I'll be able to brush them off. But we're just going in and out real fast. You can see they, they drank all of the syrup. We gave them two quarts earlier in the week and they've already drank it all. Make sure there's no settling out. Shake up any of the essential oils that have separated out. It's good to add the essential oils while it's still warm so that the essential oils don't all separate. I'm actually gonna make this a little easier on myself and go ahead and do this jar too. That way in the other hive, all I gotta do is just remove the two jars and place one in that will already be ready. So because I have essential oils in here, I'm pouring a little bit in 
each one. And we have a suicidal bee that flew into my syrup. I'm gonna go ahead and rescue, if it'll let me rescue it. <laughs> Come here, buddy. I'm supposed to wait till I put it in the hive. There you go. Dry off. we go. Fill these jars all the way up. See the bees are really interested in me. They can smell that syrup already. And we just have a bunch of holes punctured in the lid. And we turn it upside down Oops. upside down let that trickle out that automatically comes out and very very carefully try to kind of get the bees out of the way by swaying from side to side and slowly lowering it there's a chance you're gonna crunch one and that does happen but you got we another. do our best not to what's up the other jar? The other jar is going on the other side. Okay. Wow, they are already, if you can see this, we had to put these five frames in to hold space. You don't want big space openings, but you can see they're already building comb on these frames. So this means that they're already advancing in their growth just from one week. Wow. That means they're bringing in a lot of nectar. All right, hold for a minute so I can... Alright, um, this is my first time going up to the actual hive. First time wearing my bee suit, and I am not scared. I am looking forward to this. Yay! Just remember before you put that syrup in to turn it upside down outside of the hive, because it splashes the first turnover, and then it stops coming out. And these are super, super chill bees, Ryan, so you shouldn't have any fears at all. I know it's hard not to, but not you're doing really good. You're going really slow. <laughs> I'm actually not scared at all. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Are they? Okay, so this one's not building out. They've built a comb. Oh, no. You see it? Yes, I'm supposed to destroy that, I think. And that's why you're not supposed to have open space. Darn. Okay. Yep, just to lift it out. Did you feel how it was like a little bit stuck? Yeah. They've already begun proposalizing. So should I just set this down? I would set it down on its side so you're not smushing the bees and just set it in front of the hive so that they can go back in. Oh yeah, Mitzi's coming to see us. You're doing really good, Ryan. Thank you. This close to all these bees. <laughs> wow, so fascinating. They're building like a little comb on the side of this thing too. Looks like. It was probably attached to it then, Maybe. I bet. Yeah, but like all the little spots. Yep. All right. So neat. So how comfortable do you feel? Uh, I feel very comfortable. You think you could uh, reach in there and break that comb off? Um, so what do I do there? Just Is that going to make a mat or what? Uh, I mean, just... Knock it to the Maybe side. I should wait until I talk to Bobby and find out the best way to do it. Okay. So go ahead and give them their syrup and then I'll message him. Alright. So I've already turned it. I'm gonna do like you said. Yep, just place it in there and just sway it from side to side just to shoo 
them out of the way. Try to put it in a spot where there's not a lot of bees. And that's it. Okay. You're good. Now you just put the lid on. Ryan, you're really reminding me of a sloth right now. <laughs> but it's okay. I'm glad you're taking your time, doing what's comfortable. Voila! All done. What are you doing, Mitzi? Are you hunting? Are you hunting? What'd you find over here? Anything yummy? Mama, there are my bee suit now. Your oh bee suit. Goodness, he is so demanding. He wants to be a beekeeper so bad. We don't have your bee suit yet, buddy. You'll have it soon enough, I'm sure. For now, you get to be Mama's little pretend beekeeper. You don't go near the hive still because this doesn't protect you, but you get to walk around the yard now. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. Good boy. Oh, Mitty, Robin Round is Robin Round. Mitty was Robin Round is Yeah, Mitty. Hi, baby. Rolling in the dust. That's, I think somebody in the live feed one night said uh, they'd never saw, seen a cat on our farm. Well, there you go. There's one of them. She's been in the videos. She's just not always hanging out with us. She kind of does her own thing. There's like Micah in the dust that she was rolling in and she's all glittery. It's like the glitter that you guys wanted me to put on Ryan's beard. What you got there? So much worms. So much worms. So much worms. He just keeps dropping them because he has so many. He can't even hold them all. Open your hands up so I can see. All it takes is one chunk of soil. And, it ain't and there's 300 worms oh. in this oh, one chunk. Worms. Yep, worms where I just took it away from. There's 300? Yeah, well, look. I'm amazed. Look. That is one chunk, and they just got away because they're squirming away from me. Wow. Tons. There's more in there, in the hole. Ah, right, don't give them all to me. <laughs> then I'm all. This is just so healthy. The soil has been added to with the organic matter over and over and over and the worms love us for it. <laughs> mm. Here, Liam, you go put them in the potato grow bags? Uh, I come. It's a big one. That is a big one. This is your biggest but job I can't yet. do it much. Oh, go, go. <laughs> you don't You don't <laughs> I have to do all of them. Do you want to take one so you can keep track of it? Yeah. There you go. Or two. Or two. Wow, well, that was much. Oh, wait. No. <laughs> I won't eat your worms, although it is tempting. <laughs> Noodles. <laughs> Noodles. Look. Look, Daddy. Ew. We can put a, one in that grow bag, one in that grow bag. That's a tough one. One in that grow bag. That's a tough one. One in that worms. grow bag. One in that grow bag. That's a lot of worms. One in that grow bag. <laughs> There's so many worms. There's like a gazillion, bazillion. I just dropped like 10 in that last grow, grow, grow bag. Yay for the worms! Woohoo! So Isn't it beautiful? Well, of course the flower is. I'm talking about the comfrey. That's some good looking comfrey we've got growing here. 
has a nice texture. If y'all can see how many bees are on this creeping Charlie, but I'm just gonna say there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, and then there's a bunch that's just they're they're literally completely covering the creeping Charlie which makes me feel like it's a really good thing that we did not blowtorch this as badly as I wanted to get rid of this Creeping Charlie. It had a purpose, a purpose I didn't know about at the time. It's just magical how God can create things like this. And the, the whole network of nature works together and the Creeping Charlie is available for these bees during a time where nothing else is blooming. I find it extremely fascinating. I heard Ryan mentioning the comfrey earlier, and I just wanted to say that if you haven't added comfrey to your garden yet, you should. Comfrey is a wonderful bioaccumulator. It sends roots down deep to pull up minerals that would not otherwise be able to be used by the plant's roots located at the surface. And it pulls those minerals up into the leaves. So these leaves are full of usable minerals for the plants. So you can do a method called chop and drop, which means you trim off the outer, more damaged leaves, and you drop them down on your soil right where they are. Or you could take them and say, oh, this strawberry plant could use some extra fertilization. I'm gonna put it around my strawberry plant. And it will decompose into the soil and provide nutrients to the plants. You can also take these leaves and harvest them and make a tea from them to fertilize your plants with. You can also feed it to your goats and chickens. It can also be used for medicinal use for using as a compress on bruised or broken bones even um, to help with the healing. So comfrey has many uses in the garden and the homestead. What is the matter, Liam? Worms not helping me. He's not helping you collect worms? I'm so sorry. No, I am, but this is that I can't but I can't hold them because I'm trying to find more worms. Yeah, he can't hold them for you because he's he's the one who's digging the holes for you to find more. So you can see I've been working on that bed, trying to get the winter weeds turned over so that they'll die so I can plant stuff. I found glass. Uh-oh. Thank you for finding it and bringing it to Mommy so that nobody else will get hurt on it. Can you bring it to Mommy? You can step in this bed, because nothing's planted yet. So you can step on that. There you go. And then step down into the ditch. And voila. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Be watching out for any more glass. The people who lived here before had quite a few garbage piles we've found. But we're getting it cleaned up and nice over the years. Dirty butt. Silly, beautiful herd. They want cabbage, for real. Yeah. We're making corned beef and cabbage for dinner. And Ryan brought the trimmings of the cabbage out. 
Apparently goats love cabbage. <laughs> Silly goats. Silly goats. Is that yummy girls? <laughs> They're desperate. They're saying, please daddy, please, I want another leaf. Hello, Jax. Hello. The ducks are going through a molt. So there's like feathers everywhere. So every morning I kind of get panicked like, oh no, something got in the ducks. But no, they're just molting. We've got to get rid of the two males that are not anacondas so that we can start collecting eggs for incubation. So we'll have pure anaconda ducklings to hatch out. had a very very fun very productive day and now we're gonna go in and enjoy some corned beef and cabbage yeah that was nice out today oh. bye. Bye. bye bye everybody thank you for watching bye. you know the drill we'll see you next time on wholesome roots, wholesome roots. Next time on wholesome roots. bye bye now i'm gonna turn it off which button is it this button sure Thank you.